to the fourth episode of the Chemist Unit podcast here on YouTube. My name is Camilla and this little podcast is about knitting and more knitting and a little bit more knitting. Maybe some knitting designs because I'm also a knitwear designer. I'm going to talk a little bit about my patterns, but mostly I'm talking about what is on my needles. What am I working on right now? So today I have a few things that I want to show you and talk to you guys about. I have uh, recently finished another pair of socks. <laughs> yeah, this podcast is not supposed to turn into a, a podcast, knitting podcast, uh, all about socks. But it's because I have recently been pretty interested in how to work uh, different kinds of heels and working toe up and cuff down. So I'm just really researching a little bit because I want to do my own sock pattern. So I have another pair of socks that I want to show you. And then, of course, this is the main attraction of the podcast today because I have finally finished my own cactus flower sweater. And uh, I love this. It turned out just the way I wanted. And uh, I'm suffering a little bit because it's very warm today. And even though it's in the morning, actually it's around nine o'clock in the morning, it is very warm and the sun is coming in from the window. So um, I will take it off really soon. <laughs> but I just want to start it out by showing... Maybe I can stand up a little and you can see long sleeves, two by two ribbing. Um, yeah, it just fits me. I think it fits me um, really nicely. I like this rounded yoke with the increases done in the round instead of the raglan um, increase. I work with that as well and I do patterns with the raglan as well, but I just really like the way this one turned out. It's in three colors of Madeleine Tosh Merino Light. The one I have in the top is, let me come closer, is, um, this is the Modern Fair Isle. This one is, I didn't remember the last time, but I remember now. It is the Subtle Flame with the Copper Glitter and I have it right here. This color. And the last one is, as ever I showed that one the last time as well and on top of the modern fair Isle and the as ever I have one strand of brushed lace from Mohair by Kana in the colorway 3002 and it has like a peachy it is called peach and when you wear it um, when you knit it together with both the Modern Fair Island, which is a little bit more neutral color, and the As Ever that has a little bit more pink, it kind of just tones the same way, even though the colors, are, you can tell it's different, and they are supposed to be different. But I like that when you use the same color of mohair, it kind of, I don't know, just gives it a nice, like uh, the same kind of tone on top. I really like that. On the stripe, I didn't use this one. I used this one. So I have these two together for the stripe. Yeah, I know it doesn't look like they will go well together, but the good thing with um, with the silk mohair is that it's just like when you play with paint, it's just a drop of another color and it will mix totally together for the stripe. So it doesn't look like I have two different colors on the stripe. So, Yay! This also means that I know the exact amount needed for this size of the sweater. I was my own test knitter in this size. So I'm thinking, hmm, I'm not sure if I'm going to promise you that it will be out this week, but probably next week. I will let you know on YouTube. No, on Instagram. I will let you know on Instagram exactly when this is ready. And it has already been tech edited and translated to English. By my tech editor she does both she's a very smart woman she did both so it is ready actually so pretty soon i guess yeah but for um, this sweater i would say you, you need like one skein in this top color and of course for the strap you really don't need a lot so you don't have to buy a whole skein in this contrasting color maybe you have something in your stash that will work 
as the contrasting stripe. It's, um, I think I've used like 20 grams. I don't think I even used that much, maybe only 10, I don't remember. But if you have a little lift from a sock pattern or something, use that. So you don't have to buy another skein because the metal and touch uh, is it's pretty expensive. Not that it's too expensive because I know the pr the, the uh, process behind hand dyeing yarn just takes a very long time and it's a really nice product that they do make. Uh, Madeline Chess, it's one of my favorite yarns. And uh, so, you know, if you don't have, don't buy an extra for this, for this. just use what you have scraps. Or uh, as I see it, if I only need a little of a color, I will suddenly can add extra yarn to my stash and I like to do that you can see i have these boxes right here maybe in another episode i will i uh, open them up and show you what it's in here but this is mainly my scraps one for sock so when i do another pair of socks i can use my scraps and i have scraps for that's like single merino not for socks but for shawls or blankets or whatever i want to do so i have my scraps divided and i have them in here i actually build a little tower of metal and touch all caked up over here because uh, sometimes it's a good way to just put just take your scraps and place them together somewhere and look at them and for me at least that gives me an idea of ah uh, maybe I should do something with that color and this color and then I will change them so I kind of I kind of rearrange my yarn a lot put I have some used I used to have yarn in my bookshelf in my living room and I would just you know play around and see and that is actually a good a good way to see colors in a see what kind of colors will go together well so uh the cactus flower sweater is done it is worked on a four millimeter needle and right now i just don't remember what that is in us but i will check because i have my favorite needles right here okay so uh four millimeter needle is a us size six so and then i work the ribbing on a smaller needle like a us5 that's a 3.5 millimeter to just i just picked up i showed you the last time that i had the i hadn't done the uh, ribbing yet and i wasn't sure if i was just gonna uh, wear it like that but i just picked up the stitches are totally like a wrote in the pattern so it's not a I don't like it to be too tight but it's still open and but you can still have a t-shirt and I have the whole t-shirt sticking out of the neckline so yeah I'm gonna post some pictures later uh, on Instagram with this and hopefully have the pattern out really soon but now I have to take it off <laughs> because uh, one strand of merino and one strand of mohair is a little too warm for me right now so I'll just go change I took off the big sweater and put on a t-shirt that's a little bit um, more um, yeah, suited for the weather today anyway. So I'm gonna, that was my first finished object, my cactus flower sweater. And the next thing that I will show you is my socks that I have worked two at a time and I did them toe up. So I cast on I think eight or ten stitches on each needle and I do the magic loop and I will do a pattern I will do a pattern and a tutorial on how to do the toe up my podcast here on YouTube will always be in English because I want to include as many of uh, you knitters out there who works my pattern or are interested in my pattern as possible but when I do tutorials and I think I'll do that in the future I've never done that one yet but um, I think I will do that in the future, work small tutorials according to uh, my pattern. If there's something that's a little hard to explain in the writing, I will do small tutorials. And because my patterns are always both in English and in Danish, my tutorials will also be in both English and Danish once I get there. I need to figure out what I, I need something to hold my camera. So when I do a tutorial with the knitting, my camera needs to be on top, I think. And I'm not sure how that is going to work out. So I had to do some more research on that. But anyway, these are my scrappy socks that I worked uh, toe up. And I did post pictures on Instagram. So 
so this is a maybe I'm repeating myself but uh and I did the afterthought heel for the first time I had never worked an afterthought heel before I think I'm gonna um, do my own pattern uh, only because it's just fun to have my own pattern and then I can you know change if I want to do something uh, do uh, another kind of pattern heel so yeah but these are scrappy sock projects and the speckled yarn is a sock yarn from Melantosh and the yellow yarn is uh, from Volmeiser. I have said that before in a previous episode. So that was it for finished objects. So let's talk about works in progress. I have, um, actually I'm working on another pair of socks. My oldest daughter just said the other day, are you knitting, are you knitting socks again? Are you not going to do anything else? And I'm going to do something else as well, but I'm just really into the whole um, construction researching phase right now. So I just finished uh, this and you can tell where I have the, the dark uh, light bulb stitch markers where I'm going to put my afterthought heel. So I have worked the first one. And I did them on the nine in circular, even though I thought I would never finish them because I was like, eh, like that. And I was, it was so annoying. I left the other sack somewhere. I found it. It was outside where I had my coffee this morning. So this is my second sack. And as you can see, I'm still using my nine inch circular needle. I'm not sure I'm gonna use it after I have finished this pair of socks, but I have been determined to finish this pair. And also I have joined the summer sock club at the Crazy Sock Ladies uh, group in Ravelry. And because I have joined that camp, they call it a summer sock camp. And because I've joined that camp, and I have joined the nine in circular uh, cabin. <laughs> I'm gonna stick to it because once I join something or decide to do something, I usually go through with it in you know, except if it's a diary or something boring. <laughs> but, so I'm I'm definitely gonna finish these socks and I don't have a long way to go. I just put in stitch markers here from my afterthought heel. So I'm thinking I have maybe around I don't know, 30 rounds before the toe. And I can work the toe on magic loop. So that makes me happy because these nine in circular, we have become friends, but we will never be best friends. At least I don't think so. But I'm still working on these and it's, I think once you have the thing, actually once you get like a feeling of where you want to have your, how to hold it with your hands and because you can knit like you would do with your regular size needles. You have to work like with the tip of your fingers and not all your fingers can control the needles at the same time. So it's more knitting with three fingers and then having your pinkies here to kind of hold your work a little bit. So it, it takes, I would say like half a sock or maybe a whole sock to kind of get that into your hands without hurting too much or kind of tense and tense up a little bit in your hands. So that's definitely something I think if you like to knit socks, you should give it a try because I know some people really love to knit socks with these short uh, circular needles and also sleeves. If you work sleeves on a sweater and something, people would like to work on these uh, small needles because you can knit a little bit faster than going with the magic loop uh, cord pulling that out and knitting all the time. It takes a little bit more time. And also the best thing I think with these socks is that when I work my socks on Magic Loop, I always have like a, a little stripe. You can actually tell from where my cord will stick out. So when I work the Magic Loop, I will always be able to tell that, that little gap. And I think actually it's because the first stitch after uh, you know the first stitch on the on every needle like the first stitch, i tend to tighten that stitch a little bit more 
And what it does is that it doesn't actually tend that stitch, but the stitch before or the thing in between. So I don't have a gap. I actually just it's a little bit more tight. So I think I'm gonna see if I can work on that a little bit so I don't get that tightened stripe or whatever. But you don't get that when you work on the small uh, nine inch circular needles. It's just very pretty and there's no stripes. It looks very good. So yeah, when this sock is done, I think I will be working on a pattern. And I think I will actually maybe work two different patterns. But the first one I'm gonna do is, is like this with an afterthought heel because I think Actually, if you're a beginner and have not knitted socks before, I think the afterthought heel is actually an easier way to work your heel. There's no short rows or no picking up stitches or it's it's a bulletproof way to make a heel and not have the small holes for where you pick up stitches. So I think um, I will do that during the summer, maybe. Yeah, so that's uh, another uh, work in progress. I always have my work in progress in their own little bag. So I know that if I'm going somewhere and I know I'm going to take my socks, I'm just going to take this bag. So I always have my projects in their own bag. And that's why you need a lot of bags. Yeah, so this is my... I think this is actually my favorite bag. It's um I have showed this before, but uh, I don't mind showing it again. And I am not sponsored or anything by Calico. I just really like it. Yes, that was one work in progress. And I have actually decided to share with you something that I thought I would not share with you yet, because I thought that because uh, I am also working designing my own patterns that it would be best not to share until it's almost done so that yeah i don't know i don't know why actually i don't think anyone's gonna copy an idea and you can copy ideas if, even after the pattern is out so i have decided to share this with you also because maybe you could give me some feedback on what you think or if uh, you say no no that's a really bad idea or you should do it like this or i don't know not I'm, I'm mostly not gonna change the design anyway but uh it's always nice to to show and share and just be honest of, about what is going on so i have it right here in my other favorite calico bag it is a, a vest and actually, it's pretty funny that I'm working on another vest because I said I wouldn't do a vest. So from now on, I will, I'm not going to say uh, what kind of patterns I will never do in the future because you never know. Actually, this is going to be a vest. And I'm not sure about the construction of this because um, it's, it was a little hard for me to figure out the best way to work a vest because I didn't really want the to sew the stripes together on top in this pattern because I was afraid that it would be too thick. But I'm working on a... Oh, let me just... This has been in the bag, so it doesn't look so good. Let me see if I can do it better. This is... What am I knitting bubbles? Yes, again. I don't know actually how many patterns I have out with the bubble stitch pattern. It's a lot. And actually it's a funny story because the first pattern I did is just called the bubble sweater. I will post a picture right there. It was one of the first patterns that I ever made. And in the beginning I hated knitting these bubbles. It's like every time you knit six rows you have to work your bubble stitch and it just kind of pulls your knitting a little bit. So it's like knitting and going back and knitting and going back. But um, after a few rows, no, well, actually I'm lying, more than a few rows. After maybe half a sweater, I kind of just loved working the bubble stitch. It's in a way like working stripes 
we just have to see what it looks like with the next row of bubbles and um this is actually the back of the vest so i'm just i've just picked up stitches here for the shoulder so it would actually be this is a size medium so it doesn't fit me but it's supposed to go like this and then then i'm working the shoulder i pick up stitches here and work the shoulder and i pick up stitches here and work a shoulder and then a neckline and then eventually they will meet and you can knit the rest of the the rest of the vests in the round because uh, i don't mind too much knitting back and forth but if it's not really necessary, I would always rather just knit in the round. And uh, yeah, one thing is the bubble stitch. I like that. I have never actually worked the bubble stitch pattern before in one strand of fingering and one strand of mohair. So this is a new yarn combination. Well, the yarn combination is not new. Everybody's working these two types of yarn together right now. But for the bubble stitch pattern, I have not done that before in these two yarns combined. And the one yarn I have showed this before is the Feeling My Oats in the yarn called Visu from the Danish hand dyer Birken Bell. I have showed this yarn before, but I'll just show again there the brand, the name. This yarn was gifted for me because I asked them to. <laughs> I was being a little rude, but I just wanted to try it out. So one strand of hand dyed from Birgen Bear and one strand of Tilia in the light truffle. I don't know, it, I don't remember the number of the colorway, but the it is called light truffle. And these two together I love to mix mohair and fingering weight yarn that doesn't necessarily look like they're going to match. But what I think is funny is that this almost looked like a birch tree, like the, the bark on the birch tree. And that is funny because the name of the yarn dyers, whew, Christina and Nina, their last name is Birk and Bau, and Birk is the Danish word for birch. So I am making a birch colored vest in yarn from Birk. That's a little funny. So maybe we should call it birch bubble vest. Hmm. I don't know. Um, naming patterns is always very, I really enjoy that. And usually when I name a pattern, it will have a story. So when I, in the last episode, I showed you the Hermanu shawl, then I named it Hermanu because that was the island where I was knitting um, my shawl. The problem is that my bubble sweater is named bubble sweater. That's not very imaginary. It's just really a pretty boring name. And then I have the baby bubble sweater and the baby bubble cardigan and the bubble hat and the big bubble sweater. So I'm thinking I'll just stick to that line of bubble names and call it the bubble vest. Unless you have a brilliant idea. So this is a design I'm working on. And I'm not sure when this will be done, but I'm not in a hurry. This will be sometime in the fall. And once I am ready for test knitters, I will let you know. Because uh, maybe there's someone Maybe some of you would like to be testers as well. I'm not, um, usually when I need testers, I will just, the ones uh, that usually help me out, I will send them an email. And then if I don't have enough testers or if, yeah, if I just want to give everyone else a chance, I will write on Instagram. But I'm thinking I might in the future do a Ravelry group. I did a Ravelry group already. There is a group on Ravelry called Chemist You Knit. But I don't have any members because nothing has happened there yet. I just I just made the group, so it's an option for me to use it in the future. And I just saw um, the podcast by Lerke, who's also a Danish knitwear designer, but she's also podcasting in English. Her podcast is called Fiber Tales, and she's um, 
she's an amazing podcaster and an amazing knitwear designer and she's doing her test um testing talks and uh test knitting searches in her revelry group and i thought that was a really clever idea because you can actually talk to each other and um so when there's a um, something to change in the pattern or something like that. Everybody gets can read the message and you can read each other's comments. Right now I'll communicate on email and it's not the perfect communication platform for test knitting. So I'm, I'm gonna be working on that a little bit in the future to see what will be the best way. So please let me know if you have any ideas on how to do that. Right now I usually also only use the Danish test knitters because i usually write the pattern in danish first and then i test it and it's take edit it and then translate it and then it's good to go but i'm thinking maybe i should just write the pattern in english to begin with i might as well do that and then more testers could be interested maybe because then there will be a lot more neighbors who can understand the pattern so yeah that's just a lot of me thinking out loud so um yeah Enough about that. What else? Yeah, actually, I want to show you something else that I'm working on because um, as a knitwear designer, it's not like that you get an idea and then you knit it and then you write it down and then it's good to go. Sometimes you have an idea and it's all in your head and in your head, it just looks wonderful and then you write the pattern. Sometimes I write the pattern before I actually knit the sweater and sometimes it's the other way around. But this time I just knew in my head exactly how I wanted it to look. It was a, it's a cardigan and I wrote the pattern while I was knitting. So actually the knitting pattern was done before the cardigan was done. And then I sent it out to test knitters because I have some really good test knitters and they knit really fast. So that was a good, um, they would be fast so when uh, by the time my own cardigan was done the pattern was ready for release and actually my test knitters were faster than i was let me show you uh, i have the project here it's called the nina cardigan and um, i call it nina because of the german uh, singer nina she was a big thing in the I guess 80s, late 90s, she had a huge uh, hit with a 996 Luft Balance. Yeah, but uh, anyway, I'm not gonna sing on the podcast. I promise I'll never do that again. But actually, I did uh, name the uh, cardigan after her because this is a black, grayish cardigan, and I wanted to have that rock and roll feeling. And I'm just not sure <laughs> that I succeeded. My sister just did some, I did an amazing job and, but I'm just not sure the look is what I want, but maybe I should actually just finish it. It's a, uh, yeah, it's a very classic uh, raglan cardigan with um very short, two by two ribbing and I'm gonna pick up stitches for the button band eventually but I just I'm not just not sure um, if this is just too plain if there are too many cardigans out there that looks like this um, I love the color it's like a Okay, my hair is in the way. It's gray and still black. It's the mm, and because it's uh, I have one skein that I didn't cake up yet. It is Madeline Tush DK in the colorway Leopard. And you can tell that it's both light and dark gray. And even a little bit of black every now and then. Um, okay, let me get this hair out of the way. So I did the ribbing on on the neckline. So it's going to be like this. And once you block it, it might it might just get a little wider. 
and then I have room for the button band and I know that when you knit in super wash merino it will grow a little bit uh, after you wash and block it so you always have to take that into consideration but I just really needed a project with no mohair but still on a size six um, four millimeter needle now that I'm looking at it again I'm thinking maybe I should just you know get on with it and finish this cardigan I'm ah, this is not gonna work I'm gonna tear out my needles I can feel it okay let's see if I ruined it no lucky me the needles are still here okay but yeah but I just uh I need to work on this a little bit more. The pattern, I already did the pattern. I wrote the pattern. But uh, I'm thinking maybe I should do like an eyelid pattern at the bottom just before the ribbing. And I'm not sure. Actually, I wanted like a long twisted rib at the bottom and maybe a long twisted rib sleeve. But then I'd already worked the 2x2 two two ribbing on the edge. So I didn't know if I should just do that or... Yeah, a lot of thinking before I finish this Nina cardigan. Actually, I think it's so long now that I'm actually ready for the ribbing at the bottom and start my sleeves. Why did I do that? You can tell I have all the yarn kicked up, ready to go. Yeah, now that I think about it maybe I should just get going on this Nina cardigan but because I, I think it'll actually be an amazing cardigan for the fall and I have already uh, got the yarn to um, knit it in a smaller size because this is um, my own yarn I bought this myself and then Madeline just gave me uh, some yarn so I could work the Nina cardigan in a smaller size and I'm gonna do it in this funny speckled color DK weight yarn in the name Mars Rover so I just have to really decide on how to um, work this pattern and see where to, where to go with it because right now it's just on hold because I was afraid it would be too boring so I'm have to maybe it's okay sometimes to just knit something plain but it's just um, it is the style right now that everything has to be so plain and we can't all do that <laughs> I mean there are some pretty amazing designs out there right now already where the, everything is just plain so I, I don't know what to do. Maybe I should add some eyelid patterns at the bottom before the ribbing. Maybe that would be fine. Or maybe a pocket. I don't know. If you have an idea, let me know. Because I'm kind of blank. Like me. On this, where to go with this Nina cardigan. But i um, actually pretty excited about this mouse rover yarn. I, I just told Madeline just that they could pick out something for me. And I, I did write down what colors I liked and I like this speckled and this mass rover came and uh, I must admit to begin with I was a little I didn't really know if I wanted to go this way but uh, actually I think it's pretty fun and uh, I'm crazy about speckles so um, actually now that I look at it again hmm sometimes you just need to you know look at stuff again and in a different light and then maybe okay so enough about uh works in progress and design ideas and design frustrations because sometimes it is frustrating you have an idea and you buy a lot of yarn and uh, yarn is not cheap <laughs> so and then it doesn't turn out the way you plan so sometimes it's it's not so don't think that just a knitting designer gets an idea and then they draw it out and then they work a pattern and everything is good it's a, sometimes it's a long 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 process and other times you get an idea and it works i think it's 
maybe the same way as when you write music sometimes the song is just there and at other times you have to work at it for a long time and sometimes you have to throw it in the trash but i just really don't want to put nina in the trash even though she was hot once once upon a time in the 80s <laughs> i'm i'm bringing her back to life i think that's my plan some way one way or the other okay so actually i had more things I wanted to talk about. Some ideas for future designs I wanted to talk about and I wanted to talk about my crochet blanket, but we don't have time because I have already been talking for 38 minutes and I really like my podcasts to be around 30, 35 minutes. So, um, but we have one thing left that is very important and that is the unboxing. I removed the tape so it would be easy to open and I did not sneak peek so I have no idea what this yarn is going to look like but I did join the Birk and Bell yarn club and uh, I wanted the Etna yarn which is the strong sock yarn and this is it guys it looks like this I only took off the uh, address label uh, not that it's a secret where I live or maybe it is I don't know but <laughs> Just because the tape was all over and I just wanted to make this um, as soundless as possible. I didn't want a lot of tape cutting, ripping noise. So I'm going to open this box now. It looks like this. There's always a little shipment note. Thank you for your order. First of all, it's a little... Um, It's their card. I'm sure it has a name in English that I don't know of, but Birkenbell's card. Look, they sent me a little tea, easy green in a mug. So I'm guessing maybe this is, has a little something to do with the color of the yarn maybe, because look at the silk paper. It is also very bright green. So I don't know about you guys, but I'm thinking that something in here might be super green. Okay, so we have three skeins in here because the yarn club that I have joined is for three months. So there is one month for July and one for uh, August and one for September. And August is right here and September is right here. And I'm going to put these away because we will open them together in August and September. And I'm not going to sneak peek. I'm not going to look. So what we have left is for July. And it's not July yet, but it will be very soon. Maybe I shouldn't do this right now. Maybe I should wait. No, I'm going to do it now. Because if you are a member of the Big and Bell Sub Club and you just received this July and you don't know yet what the color is, skip ahead for the next, I don't know, few minutes. Spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. I will open the July. Can you hear the silk paper sound? You can tell here it has a name. It is named Boromir. And um, that is because the theme of this yarn club is um, Game of, no, not Game of Thrones. Um, why did that just totally Lord of the Rings sorry Lord of the Rings actually I've seen Lord of the Rings I don't know how many times because it is my husband's favorite 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 movie and I'm not gonna tell you what happened when we were to the movies and Boromir actually died I'm not gonna tell you what he did anyway ready to unbox Oh, oh, oh my lord. Look at this. Ha! I love this. It has like all the colors of the universe. <laughs> I think they, I think they went nuts with the coloring sprinkles. Isn't that amazing? Look. 
love it. Pierre can fail. You, you ladies are some crazy color people. I love that. But uh, okay, that was it. I'm not going to show you my crochet blanket. I will do that the next time. And I'm not going to talk about future designs because I have been talking for way too long. I could show you really quick. It's in right here. It's in the basket. And I'll just show you real quick because I actually did make a lot of progress. Look, this is the corner where it all started. Maybe I should order like this. Can you tell? Yellow. And then Fragile, and then Adelaide, and Sheer Peach, and what is the fuss about from Povelbo, and here we have some. Uh, the gray is in the colorway Morning from uh, Manos del Uruguay, because that is the color of my uh, Giselle shawl. And then I have some faint with glitter from the first illness show I did and then some modern fair isle which is actually the rest from my cactus flower sweater and then there is some very pop colors that is hedgehog and then some more manos del uruguay but this is a eggplant color I made a show for a friend a long time ago and then there's a little mustard that is actually the contrasting color for my uh, socks that I just showed you. And then a little bit more Fair Isle that I found. So, um, yeah, I'm definitely getting somewhere. And I'm totally in love with working on this crochet, even though I don't really love to crochet, I love to crochet on this. And I have my little basket here of scraps. That's it, guys. I have, uh, it's not uh, true to say I have no more, but I have no more time. I have a lot of things I would love to share with you, but not this time. So, um, yeah, thank you to all of you who have recently, uh, who has recently uh, subscribed to my channel. That makes me so happy, you know, sitting here and working on this and uh, doing this YouTube thing is uh, a little scary. So having support and thumbs up and subscribers is just, uh, lovely so please do subscribe if you like this uh, podcast and give me a thumbs up and there's also a little bell in the corner where you can push so you get notifications when a new um, when a new podcast is up so during the summer i will podcast whenever i have the time so maybe every week maybe every 10 days i'm not sure i'm not gonna work a schedule uh this summer because i don't know my work schedule for after the summer holiday so when I know my work schedule for uh, where I start work back in August, so then when I know my work schedule, I will know which days will be good for me to podcast. And because I need to time to podcast, it has to be during the day, so the lighting is good. And then I need time for editing, fixing all the things you say and put text everywhere and correct myself here if I say something wrong. So that all takes a little time. So for now, that's it. I'm sorry for talking so long and uh, I will see you hopefully mm, in 10 days or so, maybe sooner. I don't know. Bye from the sock club and Kevin Janet. Bye.